Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.7.5 and Razbam Sims AV8B Harrier Module. This is another bonus episode for you. Today we're going to take a little look at mark points and the various different ways that you have of creating them. Uh, the first way of placing a mark point is an overfly mark point. Now this will always work as long as you don't have a currently designated system target. Uh, we currently do, we can tell that because there's a diamond on the screen, on the HUD that is, uh, and if the diamond was out of the field of view of the HUD, we would have an arrow pointing towards it from the flight path marker. So I'm first going to press nose wheel steering, and I have undesignated. Uh, I'm also going to remove the waypoint designation just to make absolutely sure. So we now don't have a diamond and we don't have an arrow on the flight path marker. So when you don't have a system designated target, you can press the mark point button here on the bottom of the EHSD, currently labeled MK0, and it will create what's called an overfly mark point. Let's do that now, and it's now incremented to one. So we now have a mark point called mark point zero, and that mark point is directly uh, under our current location. So I'm gonna press waypoint increment long, and choose mark points, zero, enter. And we now have mark point zero, and you can see it's immediately underneath the aircraft. So that's one way of doing it, the overfly mark point. Next method a designated mark point. Now you could do that, you could do this with any kind of designated point. Uh, I'm going to choose to do it with a designated waypoint. If I have waypoint 2 selected and I press waypoint designate, I now have a diamond. Uh, this would also work with the targeting pod, the DMT, uh, basically any mechanism by which you can uh, it create a, a designated point. And I'm now going to press, let's go down to the EHSD again, I'm going to press mark point, now labeled one, mark point one. I've now created mark point one. If I undesignate and I clear that designation, if I now go down, that's mark point zero, the one we placed underneath the aircraft. And now mark point one is in that location that I had as the currently designated target point. So very, very useful. And here's a third method. This one is less often used, but it can be pretty useful for things like ingress points and so on. Let's say that I want to create a, um, let's say I want to create a mark point referenced from a pre-existing waypoint. So uh, let's go back to waypoint two. This is our target area. And I know that I want to ingress from the, the east and I want to be ingressing from six miles away from this uh, waypoint. I can press data with that waypoint selected. I can press waypoint on the ODU, so it goes to waypoint uh, offset. I can choose my bearing. In this case, because it's gonna be from the, the east, we want to go zero, nine or zero, enter. And range, I said six nautical miles, press enter. I've now created a waypoint offset for that particular waypoint. And you can see that down there as a dashed circle. Let's come out of data. And because this waypoint has a waypoint offset, we now have this push button labeled WO slash S. Let's select that. Let's designate that. And let's press mark point. And I can now undesignate and clear that. Uh, and now we've, uh, we've got waypoint two back as normal, that target area. And if I go down, mark point two is now uh, to the east. Uh, I actually need to decenter to actually see that properly. There you go. So that, that could then be used as an ingress point. So that is how you can work with mark points. You can create overfly mark points, you can create designated mark points, and you can also create mark points from waypoint offsets. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.